What's going on everybody and welcome back to the channel. In today's episode, we are going to go and do the lockouts on the IMRCs on the RTR Spec 2. And we're doing it cheap. Again, thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, I appreciate it. If you guys are new to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button right now before we even get into any of the action. Because you know what? If you wait until the end, you're going to be like, why did I wait so long to do it? And then while you're down there kind of poking around at stuff, go ahead and hit the bell notification. That way you don't miss any of the new videos that we have coming up. And if you guys like this video, which I know you will, go ahead and give it a big thumbs up. Now, into the episode. I was really hoping that we would never have to pop this hood and mess with this engine anymore, but we've been having a slight issue with this car as of recently. My issue has been that when we've been taking this vehicle out for runs, it's been doing really, really good for probably about the first five, six minutes. And then after I get on it a little bit to stretch out the legs, if you will, it's been falling flat on its face. It's been really, really crappy at lower RPM. So I've been trying to figure out what it is. I've been throwing a lot of codes that have been misfire. And then the other one is talking about the runners on this and how they're not opening. So I've been searching the interwebs. And one thing that I've been seeing happening is the IRMCs on this have been having problems with the shafts breaking or they haven't been opening fully. So I think that is what the issue is with this car. I've checked everything else for the most part, haven't seen anything else going on. So unfortunately, I'm thinking now, we're gonna have to take off this cover, take off that bar, pull the intake manifold and see what's going on. First thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and get the strut brace off of there and get this cover off of here and start disassembling everything. We've done like two videos now with me doing that, so I really don't feel like you guys should have to sit through it again. So I'm just gonna go ahead and fast forward you guys to the next step. As we're looking at the part right here, I have it sitting out here on the table, excuse the mess. You can see right here is the actuator pump. And here I've just kind of disconnected this so I could slide it out a little bit. That right there is the lever that goes up into it and controls everything. So this right here is gonna move back and forth, kind of if I could get the finger out of the way. And you can see down in here, this is what's gonna open and close your valves that control your IRMCs. If we go over here to the other one, I hit it, everything appears to be working as well. The only thing now, I guess, would be to figure out where the issue is coming from and why these aren't opening sometimes. Both of them, when I'm just doing this by hand, seem to have the same amount of tension on them, even though this one here is unbolted slightly. They still have the same amount of tension on them. So the question is, are these working or is it maybe that the wiring that I have set up isn't working? As we look here underneath the hood, here is the wiring that I have. I went ahead and I chose to keep these things operable. So I got this wiring harness from, I believe it was Lethal Performance where I got a lot of my stuff. So everything on here looks clean. Everything looks like it's connected correctly from the best I can tell. Um, so dang, now we need to just really figure out what is it that's causing this issue. I believe everything I have here is hooked up correctly the way that it needs to be. I'll go back through and go everything over everything one more time, make sure everything can't be interchanged or that there's no issues going on here with the wiring per se itself. And then we'll go ahead and see if we can hook this up and see what we need to do to test it to make it work. Looking at the wiring, everything seems to be all okay. So I'm not really sure what's happening that's causing these things not to open up. So one thing I'm gonna do is try and do a lockout, but I'm gonna do something that's not gonna cost me any money and that I've seen a lot of people do and it works. And we're gonna try and remove these and lock it out using zip ties. Here's the back of our intake manifold for the 2018. So as you can see, all the actuator stuff has been taken off. I have it sitting right here. Here's our actuator pumps right here, as well as our sensor and then the hose that connects them, as well as the air hose that goes to the back of the manifold. All that is removed when you do the lockouts. As you can see right here, I don't have the big metal lockouts. That you, well, I don't want to call them big. They actually are fairly small and they go right here and connect from one of these tabs here, down here, where you're going to find the pivot point for your IMRCs. So, what I am doing is the cheap, inexpensive way, 
which is, uh, I put a zip tie on there. I looked around online, I've seen people doing this, I've seen that it has worked. Uh, with the heat and everything back here, I don't know how well it's going to hold up. So we may end up having to take this off and redo it with the actual like MMR style lockouts. But for now, this is what we're going to try. If you look here, you can see I drilled one little hole right through. It's small, just big enough to fit my zip tie through. Bring it through, wrap it around this little post as well as our rocker. And then over on this side, I drilled two one on either side and then the zip tie will come up through i'll snug it down tight and then we'll trim this stuff up here i personally myself i went ahead and put all the screws that i took out back into the places they came out of one in case i decide i want to use them again and i don't want to lose them the other reason two is i don't know i just feel like it's cleaner and needs to put everything in that position because what's the point in having an open hole there you know exactly here we are now with both zip ties in place and trimmed up i tried to get it as close as i could as i put the pliers on there, the snips, I kind of grabbed onto it lightly, twisted it, make sure that there was no further it could lock down in place before I went ahead and made the cut. I just want, as many other people have said, you don't want to leave a big little burr back here or a jagged edge in which if you have to reach back there for any reason, you start cutting open your hands. So I want to make sure it was nice and clean up in there. So all we have to do now is get this back onto the vehicle, test it and see if it works. One thing I wanted to take a second to point out that I don't really see in too many other videos or any video at all that I've watched yet is what do you do with the connectors that went to your IMRC? Uh, they're not getting used anymore. So you kind of need to get them up and out of the way. So what I did is I took them and I zip tied them to the back side of the wiring harness to kind of keep them out of the way. I'm not trimming anything, I'm not cutting anything. They're all gonna be in there. I just don't want them dangling around, flopping around. I don't want them getting in the way of anything as I start to put the intake manifold in. So that's why I went ahead and zip tied them to the back side of the harness just to keep them good and out of the way and still there in place in case I ever need them again. Everything is back in here together. I need to reconnect the battery, move the F-150 out of the way and then get this thing out on the road and hopefully she drives a hell of a lot better than what she was before we did this. Just got back from the test drive. Uh, everything was going great until it wasn't. So we have quite a few codes here. Uh, some of these are still from the cam staff position sensor and then these down here are all from the runners being stuck open. So I got to figure out how to fix these and clear that but another one that just popped up is telling me that uh check my e-brake system which even when it's disconnected it's having an issue but i'm having an issue with the brakes in general because it feels like there's an issue with the brake booster so it may be something that to do with the actual line up front that goes to it in the vacuum because sometimes i feel super super solid um, and sometimes they feel they feel worse. Looking here underneath the hood, you can hopefully see the difference instantly in how it was set up when I had the regular IRMC controllers back there versus my deletes. Before this it was a mismatched menagerie of just cluster, but we cleaned it up. This here used to go over here. And then I had another line from here that went into the loop that went up to the booster. It's a T section, or actually not, it's more of an H section. Let me grab it real quick. Here it is right here. One section of it would go to the line that went up and through to here. This other end went around and clicked originally. I had it um, over here. And then this line here, I had connected back here where I now have capped off. So that was all mixed around. And then there was also a line that went towards the back. All that stuff had it cleared up. There is a nipple now back here that you can see where your actuators used to mount up to get vacuum that is now capped off. And then I also have capped off here on the intake tube. So we're gonna start this up, see how she does now. Many of our problems were fixed by that. It was a good drive, no check engine lights, but if you come around here with me, yep, we have a rather aggressive ticking. <laughs> 